Hey guys, Randall Sid here. I am bringing you an extra video this week because I wanted to talk a little bit about the recording of the vocals for my song Einstein 1905, which came out a couple weeks ago. Um, I recorded the vocals on this Earthworks SR40V. They sent me this mic a couple months ago, and I have been blown away by its quality, and I just wanted to kind of do a deep dive into this microphone, uh, the signal chain that I used for the vocals on Einstein, and then actually open up the Pro Tools project and talk a little bit about the mixing that I did uh, for the final cut. And I was so happy with how it turned out. I ended up releasing that song as a single and I put it on Spotify and iTunes. And a lot of it has to do with uh, being totally surprised by how well this microphone uh, ended up recording those vocals. So it's a hypercardioid condenser microphone. That means, you know, it uses phantom power. It has, uh, you know, almost a textbook perfect hypercardioid pattern where up to like 90 degrees off center, you're, you can still hear that it's, there's no gain reduction, uh, no change in frequency response. It's just very faithful. Also off axis, uh, you'll hear 30 dB of reduction, of rejection, I mean. Um, so like monitors, other bandmates, uh, any ambient noise, going to be reduced by 30 dB uh, off access. So that's going to really help with feedback. You're going to get a lot of gain before feedback on a live stage. As a really quiet singer, I've always looked for a microphone that gives me a lot of gain before feedback. And, you know, my solution, where did it go? Oh, here it is. My solution up till now has been the Beta 58A. I've used this thing at hundreds of concerts. It's been my tried and true. It has pretty high gain. Um, sometimes it causes issues. Not the most faithful mic in the world, uh, as far as reproducing what I sound like, but it's it's been a really good answer. Now, there are major differences between a hypercardioid condenser mic and a dynamic mic like the Beta 58A or the SM58, and I'll go into that a little bit. One of the major differences is the frequency range and the frequency response of this microphone. Um, it basically captures everything from 20 hertz all the way up to 40 kilohertz, which is 20 kilohertz higher than the human ear can even hear. So why would you want an extra 20K of sound information if you can't even hear it? Well, research shows that most musical sounds produce overtones that live in those higher registers. And even though you can't actually hear them directly, they're interacting with the sounds that you can hear. They change the resonance and the timbre. So to cut them out, you're changing the, the, the color of that sound. Um, that's one way that this is a, creates a really faithful representation of a sound. Another one is the frequency response. So while well, this guy and most, most stage microphones, um, they have certain peaks and attenuations built into them. So in, in the case of the 58A, it has a little, a little bump at the 4K range and also the 10K range, which gives it sort of that high-end crispiness that I like. Uh, bumping that 4K and 10K really helps my voice cut through a mix. It sounds really nice. Um, it also, they, they attenuate 500 hertz and below in order to combat the proximity effects. So like when you get really close into a mic, uh, a lot of the, the bass frequencies get really present and pronounced and exaggerated, and it's called the proximity effect. It's not desirable. Rolling off the 500 and below helps combat the proximity effect. This guy to get to this one finally. It has a completely flat frequency response. So that means no attenuation in the low end and no peaks in the high end, it's just flat. So while this mic might sound great on my voice with its sort of built-in EQ, it may not be the best choice for say a soprano with a really thin uh, voice. You know, it might sound screechy or squawky. This mic on the other hand is gonna give you all of the control that you would want in EQing different singers in different applications in different rooms. Another thing is Earthworks boasts that this microphone has the fastest transient response of any live microphone out there. So what does that mean? Well, a transient is the initial peak of a sound wave, uh, like sort of the initial attack of a sound. How a microphone captures a transient and how quickly it does and how quickly it lets off is going to determine how faithfully it represents that sound. So for instance, most of these mics have a really slow transient response compared to something like this. So the beginning of the sound, the transient, is 
flattened. It's not getting, it's not as accurately represented. The end of the sound, the decay is lengthened. It's, it's brought up. So it almost works sort of like compression. It's a, uh, definitely adds a color to the sound and sometimes it's desirable in some cases but often you just want an accurate representation of the sound and that's what the SR40V does with its lightning fast transient response. So all of that is to say this is an incredibly sensitive powerful uh, versatile microphone that can be used in live settings and equally well in um, studio recordings. And speaking of studio recordings Let's jump into the mixing or the signal chain first of the Einstein 1905 vocals. So as you can see, I have an Avalon VT 737SP. This is a tube, a vacuum tube compressor and uh, EQ and preamp. So I just, I kind of threw on some light compression, a tiny bit of EQ. I boosted like around the 4K range. Uh, very little. I mean, I just wanted to add a little warmth coming in through those tubes this like i said it's a very accurate sounding um microphone so i just wanted to throw a little bit of color in there on the way into pro tools so went through the avalon from there uh, the signal went through my apollo um, interface this is an apollo x8p um, eight channel interface and then into pro tools so let's open up our pro tools project and kind of dive in here um just to give you a little sample Here's the very beginning of the song. I've been traveling the speed of light with all Earth's history in the wake behind. So to jump into what went into the vocal um, on this track, uh, really not a ton of mixing needed for this vocal. So. Uh, like I said, there was a little bit of light compression I threw on with the Avalon, tiny bit of EQ, and then I actually ended up EQing just a tiny bit more. I really enjoy that 4K boost, um, especially on my voice. It really adds some clarity. Uh, so I boosted it just a tiny bit more. Um, nothing else. I mean, I, it really is very well balanced. It sounds great, sort of right out the box. Um, for the reverb, I ended up automating the reverb on this track. So in the beginning of the song, the band isn't fully kicked in yet, the band, which is us, but like the bongos and the drums are, and the OP1, like th that stuff's not in the beginning. So the vocals are pretty out front, they're pretty exposed. Um, so, you know, the amount of reverb that I ended up having for the majority of the song, still not a ton, only 6% here. Um, of the Wooden Hall preset from UAD Audio Real, Real Verb Pro. Um, that's kind of where the meat of the song ends up, but in the beginning I felt like even that amount was a little too much with the vocals being really exposed. So I automated it to start at 2% and then see if I can show you here. Um, here it is. So basically it starts, you know, down here, 2%, goes up to six gradually and then it falls off to I think one percent at the end of the song when I sing acapella. Uh, the band is gone, it's just my vocal. I wanted it to sound very intimate, very dry, um, but without you know being perfectly dry. So it ends up going down to uh, yeah to one percent. Um, so you can maybe hear it, hear the difference here if I solo the track. History in the wake behind versus how my mother cried so just a subtle difference but it really uh it really makes it so that you 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 know you're not drowning the vocal in the beginning when it when it's so exposed um from there it's really i just added a little bit of special sauce on the chorus basically so the chorus of this song is pretty um, it's, you know, it has a lot of space. The vocal isn't doing a ton. So there's a lot of space to play around with. I thought it would be a good place to just throw in, you know, a spacey sort of vocal effect to kind of fill out some of that space. And ended up going with this Galaxy Tape Echo from UID. Um, really love this plugin. Usually I use it in a way that it, you, you can't even tell it's on there, but in this case I'm using it as sort of a, an obvious effect. And Another, it's another thing that I ended up automating. 
So basically this is an automated master bypass, so it's bypassed for the majority of the song and it just kicks off the bypass for the chorus, so it basically turns the insert on just at the moment that the chorus happens. So we'll just play it with the track quick so you can hear it. There was more than I should have ever paid to leave those shores. All this time, where does it go? Back to you, I suppose. So that's that's about it. You know, that's that sort of special sauce I was talking about. But other than that, you know, the, it, this mic just doesn't need a ton of work. It's just it comes in. And sounds great from the from you know from the square one. So, a, the tiniest bit of you know 4K boost, a tiny bit of compression to even it out. Um, I think there was one place where the plosives got to be a little bit much, so I ended up scooping out. Uh, I automated the EQ for just like one word, where I scooped out the the very very bottom. You know, kind of put a low uh, high pass filter on it. Um, but other than that, it was it was really a joy to mix with this mic. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this sort of mix breakdown. And if you're in the market for a really premium, uh, high definition, highly sensitive, high gain uh, mic, then I think this is a really good option. Um, it, it does have a pretty steep price tag, but also, you know, you get what you pay for. So really happy that Earthworks sent this one to me. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on Sunday. <laughs>